meeting is now streaming live on YouTube. Oh, that's good. And let me get back down here to my Zoom client. There we go. Is there anything else? Oh, allow participants to rename themselves. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll make you a meeting host. Actually, I don't want to do that. But I just made you the host, so now you can do that. <laughs> um, oh, I can reclaim the host. Look at that. Boom. Oh, um, we don't want to let people rename themselves because when they call in, if people are going to Zoom hack you, that's one of the techniques that they use so you can't. Technically, your meeting is probably smell it, honestly. Yeah. Who's, who's hacking the pack meeting? Nobody. Hopefully nobody. Yep. Okay. All right. I'm making you the host again, girl. Okay. And change host. Okay. I'm I think I'm over and out. Okay. Have a great meeting. Thanks, Marty. I I'll hope see you later. Have some shorter days coming up. Me too. Well, we had the um, flavored tobacco thing on the agenda last night. Yeah. And so here's the fabulous thing about having virtual meetings. Um, at one point, I think we had like all together, like 112 people on the call. And um, we never could have hosted that meeting in person during COVID. There's the the there's no way to social distance it um so that everybody can hear <laughs> and the spit management like if anybody accidentally like when they're talking up at the microphone touches the microphone with their mouth coughs sneezes spits anything you're gonna have to stop and clean everything so crazy virtual meetings much better in in this scenario so yeah well thank All you right. i'm gonna we'll let you go Marty. have a great meeting and we'll see you later thanks talk to you soon okay bye bye, bye.
Hi, Dennis, how are you? Oh, it looks like you're having problems with sound. Oh, I think I can hear you. How you doing, Dennis? Hi. Good. How are you? Can you see me? I can't see you yet. Okay. I don't see me on mine, but. So there's usually a little um, camera icon that you have to. There oh, you there. go. Oh, okay. There, there you are. are. <laughs> okay. How are you doing? Good. Good. But Looks like I missed out on a lot last meeting. There's some stuff going on. Yeah. There's always some stuff. Hey, puppies, come here. Yeah, that's great. Mm hmm yeah. yeah, lots of fun stuff. Yeah, I counted about nine, nine different projects. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Great. So yeah, we'll uh, see what happens today. Yeah, I know there's a few people that can't make it today. Um, I know Stony and Joe will not be here, and Kathy was a maybe. She's got, she said, an important client in town. So, um, but everybody else should be here. Okay. Great. Yep. We'll see. Hopefully, nobody has problems logging on here. Yeah. You figured it out. You got here. Yeah. I think last time uh, there's supposed to be a password or something. And mm -hmm. or, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, there should have been a password for this one too, but I didn't have to enter it to log on like I usually did either. But yeah, this just went straight on. I did write it down, the passcode, but yeah, mm -hmm. I just went straight on. So it's great. Well, I'm glad you're here. Hopefully everybody else makes it too. So now did you get married? I did get married. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Yeah. We got married on 10 10 2020. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that a great date? <laughs> yeah, it was really great. We went up to Flathead and just kept it really, really small. Um, just like 25 people. Um, and everybody was great about wearing masks and it was great. <laughs> we yeah. had a really fun time. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yep. We're pretty happy. Yeah. Moderately happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Considering. Yeah. Yeah. How's your kitty doing? He's doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's old. He's 18. Oh, man. Yeah. He's has his issues, but uh, he's doing fine. Yeah, well, good. You have that cute little dog. Yep, he's right over here. He'll probably make an appearance. <laughs> yeah, we had to take him in because he he broke. He loves playing fetch. Ball is life with with Rufus. Um, but he was just running, and he broke one of his nails all the way down. So Ooh. I had to take him in to get that clipped down so um, so it could heal. But yeah, he had an owie. Yeah. But he's yeah. doing just fine now. He's he's yeah. back to play and fetch again. He's running all over the place. It didn't take him long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll heal up. So yeah. That's I'm gonna great. text, I'm gonna text Courtney, make sure she's not having any problems logging on. Okay. Yeah, it went really easy for me this time. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure that it did. So it did. So. Yeah. I'm going to turn this light off over here. Oh, there's Courtney. There. Hello. There she is. Hi, is it just the three of us right now? So far, yeah. Okay, so we will, I mean, it's not quite four o'clock yet and we have Danielle, Lisa, Hallie, 
and Heidi. And Heidi joining. So that's four more. So we'll give them a few more minutes. And Kathy said she's a maybe. Um, She said she did have a really important client in town, but that she might be able to make it. The only ones that were for sure knows are Stoney and Joe. Okay. So we'll just give it a few minutes. You never know. And Uh, we are already live on YouTube, just so you both know. Marty logged on and helped me do that and get the meeting started. Cool. Well, we'll just wait. No big deal. Um, Dennis, did you hear Sophia's back? What's that? Did you hear that Sophia is back? Who's back? Sophia. She is? Yeah. You should reach out. No, I didn't know. Really? Yeah. She was only supposed to be gone for a month or so. Um, But I think she came back a little bit earlier. Um, The beat weather. She would. Yeah. I I I have a bunch of work right now. Oh, yeah. You should call her. Put her to work. Yeah, I will. Oh, man. How have you been, Dennis? Good. Yeah, anything exciting going on? What was that? Anything exciting going on? Uh, well, they uh, brought over uh, three panels from the state capitol this morning. Cool. Are they she big? just went out. Yeah, they brought over three big panels that need to be completely restored from the state capitol. Nice. Are those stained glass ones then? Yeah, and I'm kind of busy on a couple architectural projects, so. Uh, yeah, call, call Sophia. That's great. Call you've got great to see that. Big plan. Yeah. There could be a lot of work there. Um, well, I mean, if you have three different panels from the capitol, from what I remember about the Capitol is that those are fairly large and could take a long time. Yeah, I did the uh, grand staircase as you come up, all of that stained glass and then the ceiling of the house chambers. And oh, cool. um, this is out of the, the old law library of the ceiling. So they have 40 some panels, but three of them are here. They just brought them today. Wow. So, could be a that's, lot of work. That's crazy that there's so much there. I mean, it's great. We were walking, my daughter and I were walking um, just around the university neighborhood. And we were just looking at houses and she noticed that one of the basements had stained glass on their windows. And I was like, you just don't see that anymore. You don't see people just putting stained glass into their homes. Hi, Heidi, by the way. So we yeah, are- just- not so much. Not so much now here in Padula. I mean, other cities have a lot of it, and it was a fad here for a while. But um, some houses I design, I put it in, put in stained glass. But anyway, that's, yeah, that's a good addition, I think. Um, Heidi, just so you're aware, we are waiting on Danielle, Haley, or Hallie, and Lisa. And until we get at least two more people, we don't actually have a quorum. So we can't actually, we can still have the meeting. We just can't do any voting. And our meeting will probably be pretty quick because um, I think the only big things we have going on would be the welcome sign, which is Stoney. And then the indigenous murals, which is Lisa. So unless, I mean, if Danielle comes, she can fill us in. But I mean, there's not a lot going on right now. Okay. Danny, Danny is here. She joined the call. Um, I think she just has to turn on her camera. Um, I did just get an email from, oh, Kathy's joining. Um, so we have Kathy, but I did just get an email from Hallie that she's having technical difficulties and probably won't be able to join, but we have a Kathy now. Cool. Cool. So we actually have a quorum. So we'll just call to order now. Um, once Danielle and Kathy are officially on. Danielle is Danielle. Do you like to go by Danny or Danielle? Um, I prefer Danny. Um, Danielle is my government name. Just kidding. they're both my government name, but Danny. Okay. Awesome. And just a reminder um, to have your mic on mute um, whenever possible, unless you're speaking. Helps with sound quality for all of us. Thanks, guys. So I will give out the numbers um, since we have called to order. 
The first number is 1213338-8477. Another number, um, if you're using a landline, is 833-548-0276. If anybody wanted to call in with comment or join the meeting. Um, but we'll just move right along to approval of the September minutes. So if everybody should have gotten those in their email and had an opportunity to review them before the meeting. So if anyone um, has amendments, please make it be known. And if no amendments, um, someone can move for approval. I would so move. Um, does anyone second that motion? Dennis or Heidi or Kathy? What? I'm. Oh, I moved to. Sorry. Oh, did you? Did you, was I it moved. you? Kathy, who moved? Yeah, I moved to approve the minutes. I'll second. Anyone, Heidi seconds. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes? Please raise your hand so Kristen can see. Here. I didn't realize my video was off. Apologies. That's all right. So they are approved. Um, so Hallie is officially our new member. So we're moving right along to new members. Um, Kathy, I don't know if you heard, but she's having technical difficulties. So I don't know if she'll be part of our meeting today. Um, so we'll move. And this might be a really quick meeting today because um, some of the stuff that people aren't here for yet. So like the welcome sign, Stoney is not here. So there's not, um, I mean, actually, Kathy, you could discuss the welcome sign or what's going on with that. Kathy. Can you unmute yourself? See, I'm like, um, we do have a meeting coming up with county commissioners and various entities, downtown association, um, Barb from Destination Missoula. So um, a really good group. And um, Kirsten, I'll get you the exact date because I'm not remembering it right now, but I believe you even know about it. I believe it's November 3rd. I have to check my calendar, but it's early, early, early November. I think it's November 9th. Oh, thanks, Danny. <laughs> So, um, so anyway, that's good news. So really nothing, um, I mean, nothing definitive, but the fact that it's moving forward is really exciting. That is super exciting. I'm stoked that we have so many people um, interested in talking about it and moving forward with it. Big, and it's a good collaborative group. Yeah, it's going to be a solid um, group of people in the community being able to talk about it and hopefully get things moving forward with it. So, fingers oh. are crossed. Sorry, I was wrong. It was, it's November 10th, uh, Tuesday. Oh, <laughs> woohoo. Thank you, dear. My apologies for not having that in my brain cells. You were close. You said the 9th. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, then we'll move to um, Danny, if you'd like to talk about the Indigenous Mural Project, if you have any updates. Um, I don't have an update. I know last meeting we talked about the, um, the MOU and the language, mm -hmm. um, and I haven't had time to um, work on that. Um, and so when we are actually going to meet with um, the engineers um, tomorrow. Wow, tomorrow, the 21st. Um, yeah, so... Um, to talk more about like the logistics side. Um, but other than that, I don't have any updates. Um, I'm not sure if Lisa does, um, but yeah. Heidi, you had sent an email to Donna. And you're on mute. Which one? <laughs> about the MOU. Oh yeah, I did. Um... I'm trying to let me find her response and I will t uh, come back to me in a second. Okay. Do you want us to just talk to move on for a minute and then we'll come back to you? I can fill up. Okay. So the next two things are going to move pretty quick. So then we can um, 
jump back to Heidi. So the Pavarello mural that's completed, um, contracts are signed and to the appropriate people, we have a copy of it as well. Um, has anybody had a chance to drive by it and check it out? And if you have, what are your thoughts? Um, I drove by, I actually was watching them and stupidly didn't take photos. Um, so I don't know if anyone else did, but um, I think, you know, it looks good and I think it's a good collaboration and um, I, it, it's positive, so. Super positive. I think Kirsten actually was there and took photos. Is that correct, Kirsten or Paisley? Yeah, I, yeah, I was there. I took some photos. I took a quick video with um, Alex, the artist and I painted part of the A. <laughs> Did we get photos of you painting? Um, I think actually one of the ones that the Pav put up on their Instagram, I'm like crouched down with, I'm wearing like blue leggings and I'm painting the A if you go oh, back. Cool. And, yeah, the Pav uh, uploaded a bunch of really great pictures all the way through the different stages of the, um, the community paint day on the third. Um, yeah, but it's, it's really fun. And it was a really great day. There was a, um, mm -hmm. band there, I think from the church that was just playing music all day while people were painting. Um, so it was just a lot of fun. Awesome. Is there any way we could like share their Instagram post on the public art committee, Instagram, like stories, it's like share it or even share it on Facebook? She, yeah, yeah, I shared them. Um, I shared them um, last week, but I yeah. can see, or I think like two weeks ago now. Um, oh yeah, but the one with you in it. Yeah, I can go back and do that again. I mean, you can't see my face. Plus, I'm wearing a mask. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's hey, Christian, can we um create a file on that in our Google Docs, just as far as a project file with maybe either the photos that you took and. That way we can kind of just keep it as a historical record and sure I'll, I'll put like just add some photos to where we're keeping the contracts signed copies of the signed contracts and stuff like that because you know if we ever do any kind of um history publication or what what or need some photos of our participation to have something like that would be great yeah like and in, in case we want to do a presentation to the city council to show how involved we've been in the community. Yeah, that's actually a really good point to have community uh, partnership folders. We have the parking commission. We've got the mm -hmm. Pavarello now. And then we've got the mountain line that have those three in like a public outreach folder. Should we need to do any presentation of community involvement would be really helpful because then yeah, they'll be the in more place. The more visuals we can have, the better. And, and we can put like videos together with those stills too. So it could be fun. Thank you, Kirsten, for taking photos and painting. Yeah. Um, I, I was curious, I have a question. Um, if anyone has taken pictures of the new murals that the Zach um, did, um, I know Willow was one of the artists who did um, the murals for the Zach. Um, that little alley like by um what bar is it uh reds yeah right. yeah bodega. reds and bodega yeah and yeah. bodega yeah yeah there's like murals there i haven't been down there to check them out but um i've seen pictures and they look cool yeah i haven't taken any myself but i've seen pictures that other people um have posted but yes at some point when this to-do list goes away i would love to go take some pictures <laughs> Yeah, so when your to-do list is done, could we put that on there to go take pictures and then maybe just do like a shout out to the Zach for doing a community involvement piece or adding more murals just to like show support to the Zach. And then Heidi, are you ready to go or do you need more time? So we'll shoot back to Heidi. Yeah, sorry, I this happened like almost a month ago and I can't remember anything. Okay, um, so I did reach out to Donna about um, the MOU and she, I guess her comment was, uh, she had some questions around who the MOU would be between obviously Northwestern Energy um, and then whether it should be between Northwestern Energy and Parks and Rec, um, designating like the art committee as 
you know, giving them authority that way or between Northwestern Energy and Art Committee directly. Um, and she recommended doing this as a part, um, like having all the documents ready, kind of as a part of the actual, um, the park plan adoption. Um, mm -hmm. So that whole downtown, like river park process, planning process that's going on right now. Um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I think for us, it would be a good idea to put ourselves under their umbrella and work directly with them. Um, I think relationship wise, it'd be a good idea for us to rebuild that and work together on it. Um, Kathy, what do you think about that? Oh. You're oh. muted. <laughs> I unmuted myself because I was going to say something before, but then I muted myself so I wouldn't be noisy and I have a dog eating treats in my office. <laughs> um, I agree. So I think whatever we can do to um, take a leadership role, given everybody's time and, and all of our capabilities and stuff, I think I agree with everything you said. Yeah. Lisa, yeah. how do you feel about the MOU being under Parks and Rec? but then we're umbrellaed under them within the MOU. So it'd be Northwestern Energy, Parks and Recreation, and then we're in charge of all of the art. And they would designate us as the authority for it within that MOU. Mm -hmm. I, um, yeah, and, I, don't, I don't have not, any. Oh, sorry, Lisa. I was just going to say, I'm not to take any corrections, but of course I always defer to Jim and um, uh, consultations with Mr. Nugent to see what his um, brain would say about all of this because he's um, so thoughtful and always takes care of us. So, yeah, I I don't have any strong feelings about it. I don't know how this works bureaucratically. I just know mm -hmm. like I need to get these people to do this thing and these people to do this thing, but I don't know. My uh, personal thoughts on it are that we have had a few bumps in the road with parks historically and i think this would be a very good opportunity for us to rebuild a relationship and work together on it and with parks being in charge of the park creation in that area um, it would just be a really great collaborative effort for the two groups to work together um, that's my personal thought on it how does everybody feel about that because we can approach donna and let her know you know, this is the conversation we had and how we're feeling. But who is that person going to be on? Is that going to be you, Courtney, working with them? Yeah, I can, because I think Donna is going to be the lead person on it as well. I, would I, I really, when it comes to the lead person on it. When it comes to the bureaucracy and city bureaucracy, I'm horrible at that stuff. Um, I, I just, I there's things I can do and there's things I can't <laughs> I'm happy to um, do that if everyone is okay with that, if that's what yeah. people think. So, you're, so then just for understanding, you're saying public art committee and parks and rec mm -hmm. um, with would be equal and with and then have the MOU with Northwestern Energy. Is that what you're saying? So, Heidi, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like it would be Northwestern Energy, main partner, public or Parks and Recreation main partner, and then we are um, given authority by Parks and Recreation to manage all of the art within that area, um, but we would be collaboratively working with Parks and Rec. So we're not totally equal, but almost. Ian, the way I think of it is more like... Um... The Parks and Rec would designate all the like process around getting the art there and selected, that sort of thing. And then things like long-term maintenance, you know, like the park that kind of is part of like the park infrastructure that's down there um, probably would then fall to Parks and Rec because, you know, like the art committee isn't set up to maintain infrastructure necessarily you know like not on that scale necessarily um but i think the big thing is to really um formalize the i guess the 
I guess the donation, I don't know what to call it, that Northwestern is wanting to make. Um, I think that's really the important first step is like getting what they're willing to contribute on paper. Danny, what time are you guys meeting tomorrow? Um, it's a Zoom call. At wanna... what time? Pardon? What time? 11 to 12. I'm actually free. Can you guys send me that link and I'll get on and I can just ask them? Sure. And just say like, hey, we have, um, you know, we just need to know this donation piece because that's going to be the real hiccup of the whole thing of where is the money coming from to do the art. And even if we could get them to fund one or two, I think that puts us in a much better place in getting city donations or a grant in the long term to complete the project. But getting the fu initial funding for the beginning of it is going to be crucial. And if they could at least donate to well, two, we could, you know, work with that. Um, let me just give you some of the numbers that we've been thinking about. Um, first of all, working with the North Side um, Parks, North Side Park, it's the one that's doing that main um, initiative down by the water, down by Karis Park. Yeah. Um, I mean, Karen Sippy, who's on the Blue Ribbon Committee, said that it's part of their mission to fund for this area down there. Okay. So she's ready to do fundraising for that. Um, so we don't, it's not like it's Northwestern and us. There is this third really ready party. Um, so I really don't know that we want to, we might want to let them take the lead in that fundraising and just. Um, Karen's organization. Yeah, she's on that committee. Um, yeah. She's a representative for there. I mean, I'm I'm very interested in where this money is coming from too. But I I, I wouldn't want to go to this meeting tomorrow and make that ask that question, yeah, directly because I think that I think that there are some other things in playing, and I don't want to say. I mean, I think they're ready to pay for all twelve of these murals. Well, and, I think um, at least there. put you some down meeting. Like let's set up the meeting to have that Pardon? conversation. I think that then that's going to be us acting to set up that meeting to have the conversation of what are you guys willing to contribute? We have this other group ready to fundraise, but what what do, what are you going to bring to the table for, with us? Okay, but I do think that that's a three person conversation. Not, I mean, I think parks. Like I think it's it's um, the arts committee, parks, and. Um, Northwest Energy all in the room saying, how are we going to get this paid for? I mean, the project that they did in in um, in Billings was over a million dollars. So, yeah. and they said that this project is like that project. I mean, they're making those comparisons. So they, they have substantial um, interest in this. So mm -hmm. it just be, I would be careful in that conversation about. Yeah, I think it'll be more of we need, uh, you know, requesting a meeting between Parks, Arts, and Northwestern then and just studying that and moving forward within that being a separate conversation. Yeah. We're the um, poorest party in that group of three. <laughs> we're, we're the least funded organization. So um, I think I think we should trail in that conversation. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I found out is that the um, $20 a square foot is kind of standard in this area and $25 is kind of a square foot is a national average. For, mm -hmm. sorry, for what? For murals. For murals, okay, thank you. So the actual mural that we're getting from the artist we think will be around um, 12 feet by 12 feet, which puts it somewhere between $2,800 to $3,500 a piece. I mean, that at least gets us started in thinking about prices. Now there is this pretty good range. Yeah. Especially um, I know I, I came into this meeting late. Um, sorry about that. I, time just got away from me. But um, one of the things that is supposed to happen in tomorrow's meeting is that 
So I did these um, tentative mock-ups for the last meeting um, that sort of showed the placement and the educational part of it, and then the artist part of it, and then the border on the wall. Um, I did those and um, at the same time, someone from Northwest Energy, the construction group had done mock-ups of the walls. And so tomorrow they're supposed to unveil the two of those put together. So they're gonna try to take my mock-ups and put with the actual two scale walls. Um, I don't know whether they got it done. Um, Karen wrote to them last night, but that'll be, I mean, that's what tomorrow's meeting is about it's still in the idea stage, still in the conception stage. So I think you're right, Courtney, that to make a different meeting to talk about like, hey, how, are, how is this gonna be funding and what resources do you have and what resources do the different parties have? That's a different meeting. Yeah, and from the sound of what you guys have said and just, I think, having an idea of Donna and Parks, they're gonna wanna know sooner rather than later the money aspect of it when they're thinking of the park itself and how we're going to go about um, doing all of this. And then it becomes a question of, okay, so the parks are going in, is that also a percent for art program that when we could also like fund into this. And so there's just a lot of questions that we'll have to ask um, separately from the idea stage meeting. Hey, you know what? I hadn't thought of this, but you know, they are building an entire four walled structure down there. Does that count as percent for art? Is it Northwestern Energy building it or is it the city? Northwestern? Mm -hmm. no. Probably not, it has to be city money. It comes from public funds. Oops. Yeah. Ah. But if the park is building a park with city funds, then it would be a percent for art and we would get percent from that park mm -hmm. that we could put towards that, but technically it would be, you know, it would be money for us to put towards that specific project. No, nah, it's definitely Northwest. But if it's all Northwestern Energy, then no, we don't get any money from them because they're a private entity. Okay. Which is a bummer, but Elise, you know. can you share when they get that, if they give you a PDF of that or whatever, can you share that? I mean, it, it would have been fun to see what- Let me let me see if I can do the share screen and show you the mock-up. Do you want? I think that, would, I, that just sounds really great. I mean, yeah. I- I have, but I've not really seen anything. It'd be cool to see it. And then when they put the two together, that'd be pretty cool. How do you share a document? Well, Lisa, I don't think um, we're on the city's um, oh. Zoom. And I can't change the settings. I don't think it'll let us. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, maybe you could email it to us. Or maybe I'll sounds, just. It just sounds so exciting. I'll print. I'll print it out right now and hold it up to the screen while you guys talk about other things. <laughs> okay. So while you're doing that, we'll just move on. Um, the next two things are going to go pretty quick then. So the mountain lion mural. Um, we still have the art call open. It closes on the ninth. We did have a meeting with um, Della. He is um, the artist. Is it Nell? Stella Nell? Chris? Um, I think Nell. Nell. Yeah. yeah. Um, we had a meeting with her uh, at um, Shanti's request just to kind of ask like how she would feel about reapplying. What are, does she feel like she could meet the requirements within the contract? And she said she did, but since it is an open call, um, we can't formally request her to do anything because um, we might get other submissions and then we would need to review all of those. So we're just kind of in the waiting game right now to see about submissions and if we get anything and how we're going to move forward in November. Um, so it's kind of in a limbo, which I think is fine. Um, we'll move on to the virtual music festival. They have put on a couple different shows um, that were live streaming and then they went to the area over by the X's. What's that? area called does anybody know off the top of their head right are you talking about where mrl park there or that where the um it's all brick and they that's where like the coffee shop is at farmer's market and oh, the and farmer's market uh -huh. 
but they did a show over there and I linked them up with um, Kalina over at MDA. So they're working with MDA now to kind of get a couple of shows going. And I think they're going to do something over at Karis as well, which is pretty exciting. And so that's really all that's going on with those two. Um, and then moving on to cleaning the Van Buren mural. That'll be Kathy. Oh, well, I have MTD um, involvement. It's just scheduling MTD to do it. And the other part of that is, is we're going to have to get encroachment um, easement language uh, encroachment um, paperwork done because if depending on which truck they bring and how they block the actual lane of traffic so it's not as easy as it sounds but um, it looks like we're going to be able um, to do it hope I wanted to get it done before this meeting I was trying to get that but we're working on it cool uh, hopefully before winter and then it gets dirty again. Well, it's, it's going to, it's good. We're, um, what I, I think, and we probably all have talked about this is to do, um, cleaning twice a year, mm -hmm. um, minimally. And then also because, um, MDT had volunteered to put the preservative on the piece, um, convince them that needs to be done on a fairly regular basis. For maintenance which i don't think that'll be different difficult to do but it's just getting them to do it oh cool kathy or not kathy lisa do you have the sheet printed kind of i have one of them okay okay so this would be the wall that runs alongside the library hmm. um and so it we're leaving it brick down here. And this would be about four feet high. And that's to get above a car level. So, you know, mm -hmm. the art isn't down at the floor. And then a little capper. And then, so this is a whole wall um, that's dedicated just to the Salish. So this is um, a poem in Salish by um, April Charlo. And then in English um, by Vic Charlo. And he's, he wrote the poem. Um, and then this is an interpretive about like the Charlos, like who they were and why they were important. And then here is just an interpretive um, thing about the Salish in Montana, generally. Um, and then the work is by Salish artist Frank Finley, and it's a buffalo stampede. So it would kind of go across the whole face of that wall. Cool, isn't it? I love it. And then, so that one is mostly just a printing project with getting permission and paying a stipend to those three artists. But the majority of them would be um, 12 of these. Let me see if I can keep my face in here. Um, so this is, you see the square? Mm -hmm. So the wall is about 20 feet. They're trying to make it 15, but we're arguing for 20 feet. So again, you have a four foot base to get it above the cars and perhaps a fish imprint on it. This little area here is um, educational information and it has like um, Pondere, but um, what they call themselves, what language group they're part of and what um, reservation and population. Just so, just to get people more familiar with it. Um, with the different tribes. And then each one, each square is a tribe. Um, and then the artist would have the choice of including some interesting things about that are important. So it could be leaders, some aspect of, what was it, Danny, we were talking about agriculture. Really anything kind of, I mean, um, just ideas for what you think would represent your tribe in art, um, you know, and that could be a number of things, you know, it could be their stories, um, the language, um, important animals, important land um, structures, um, chiefs, treaties, um, really, it, it's really up to the artist, but, um, you know, I just kind of like want to see like when people look at it, like, 
they like I don't know just to get an idea like the different like just like the the diversity within the tribes um you know I feel like there's just a lot of like pan-Indianism like everyone just groups us all together like we're all Native American um but you know each tribe is diverse um we have our own stories our own cultures um and I just really want that to be kind of represented in the art yeah so the the borders and everything keep everything consistent and this will probably be a redder um because they want it to match like the bank building behind it so it'll be kind of a real warm brick red although it'll just be cement so that'll keep it um a consistent feel and then these can be wildly different which would be fun and, and sort of demonstrate the diversity that Danny's talking about. So that's it. So this is the part that's in the parking lot. Um, so it would be in like where the, where the Saturday market is down there. Mm -hmm. I think it looks cool. Looks super cool. Fingers crossed. <laughs> mm, it's very cool. Awesome. Okay. So then we're gonna move on to the mission process, um, making a design and model. So Stella, I, did I bring up that Stella also sent an email about the submission process last month? Was Ooh. that brought up? I think she had made, I think she reached out after last month's meeting. Stella um, came back with another critique as well. And it was the same sentiments um, that April had also had about asking artists to submit um, a design before they're selected and the impact that that has on them. But she also let us know that so there are some artists around town telling people not to apply to us because they don't agree with our application process. So I spent the last month actually looking at different art calls around the nation, just to kind of find out what is the standard, what are most art um, public art organizations doing and what can we improve on and basically what I found is that there is actually no standard every different city has a different way of doing an art call some cities you actually have to apply as an artist to get even the application put in so they're asking artists to pay money to be considered um, some of them make you do not a mock-up for the initial design but a design just a creative thing to kind of see what you can do um, they all ask for resume, they all ask for um, artist statement, they all ask for pieces, pieces of past work, um, they all ask like what would you paint in this, and then they all do an interview process in which they ask, they go through and ask questions like we do. Um, so that got me thinking about what we can do within the public art committee because if this is really like the problem is if we're not getting Missoula artists to apply and they're feeling like our art call is just not meeting the standard and I'm going to put it in quotation marks because from what I can tell there is no standard everybody's doing it differently to work with what they have there are some art calls that they're just a regular art call for them it's going to be ten thousand dollars at a, in a city because they can afford it we can't afford that um so everybody's different um and my thought was, what if we let, and you guys, we can discuss this, what if we let the subcommittee chair of that um, project be in charge of if they want a designer, if they just want to interview an artist before they select them moving forward. Um, and then we can just kind of see which one works better if, I don't know, like I'm just throwing out ideas on what we can do to make it better because Problem is if we have Missoula artists refusing to apply because they don't agree with it, then we're gonna reach outside of Missoula to get the artists to apply. And then we get put into this cycle of, well, you're not hiring Missoula artists. I think maybe- But they're not applying. So, I mean, I'm kind of caught in this, like I don't really know what the best solution is to maintain what, to like make everybody happy. So, I thought maybe we let subcommittee chairs be in charge of it and we can see how it goes or if there's a better solution, throw them at it or throw them at me, let's talk about it. I, 
I think maybe this calls for this suggests that there's a public relations issue with between us and our artist. And maybe before we change too many of our procedures, we ought to just address what it is to get information to artists in a way that is super friendly and um, helps them understand what, I mean, what they're saying in their refusal is that you don't understand what it takes to be me. Mm -hmm. And um, which is probably true. But now we can we have an opportunity to say you don't understand what it takes to be us, and let's talk about this in between. And that that's um, I mean there are ways of reaching out to artists and just chatting about these things, and so they see what we have to do in order to meet. I mean there's a lot of um, hoops in public art, and that's what we're trying to. Those are the boxes we're trying to check, and that just seems like senseless bureaucracy to them. Yeah, and unfortunately, because we are city, we are we have to adhere to the bureaucracy and follow all of these steps and really adhere to things that um, might seem silly, but it's a way for the city to be protected, for the artists to be protected, and for our city's investment, the art to be protected. So it, I can understand the frustration of le reading government legalese because it's dry, it's boring, and sometimes it's redundant but it has to be in there um, for protection purposes. So I guess, I guess like reaching out to artists, I mean, we have an opportunity we could do like a Zoom art forum. I don't know, that's something that we could do. We could ask Cathay if she'd be willing to come and join us because she does do those. I don't know if she's doing them right now. We could also get someplace like Zach to, um, to host something for us and have like Kia or Patricia Thornton, um, someone that, um, so we're being portrayed as if we're not art advocates. We're yeah. being anti antagonistic against artists. So um, you take someone like Patricia and, and Kia who have these great reputations for being art advocates and you have them kind of broker a conversation between artists and like ask your art committee, um, you know, there could be interviews that go out about the signal box where they, where someone like Key or Patricia interviews, um, or we could try a Zoom meeting or something like that, but um, something that allows people to air what they're feeling, the constraints that they're feeling, but allows us to get in like, okay, I hear you. I see mm -hmm. you, but you know, we have to, and we'll do as, and we have to make some effort to make it easier. I actually think the requirements are pretty high too. Like making that box is a lot. Um, and I, I don't understand why you couldn't just draw, have a drawing, a template drawing of the six sides and have them draw on it or have them work on the flat surface. Like why you have to create a box is um, to me, I've never seen that before. And I've been part of a lot of art, um, mm -hmm. art contests and things like that. And so that seems a really high standard. So I think we have to make some adjustments on our end um, mm -hmm. of like, what can, how can we lower it a little bit and not make it quite as um, a marathon to, to submit to um, and, and remembering that we're working with mostly artists who are living so close to poverty that yeah. would give them a huge art project to do for free. Um, I mean, the, yeah, the I think we also need to remind them that we are, I mean, the financial aspect comes into this a lot. And I kind of lamented on, well, we could pay them for their art submissions or their art proposals, but then we're going to be reducing down the art call itself because we just don't have the money to be paying for art all the time like with the traffic signal box i mean that's fifteen hundred dollars so we pay everybody a hundred dollars who applies like we could be out a traffic signal box so and just like, how do we bridge that gap we well, only have four that. left we only have four signal boxes left the, the project isn't going to be lasting too many more years yeah i'm just like thinking though like 
financial for us. Like we just don't have the money to be doing that for every single project. Well, part of, go ahead, honey, sorry. Oh, so I have a couple of comments because I also just had a conversation by accident with someone around the traffic signal boxes. And I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, and I think maybe it would help if we, like, it seems like you have to have an open bid to be able to see most of the information about how to submit. And maybe if some of that information existed, you know, on the web page or, you know, like how much people get paid, what the expectations are. So it's like always there and people know to be prepared for it. I think that would help. I mean, it was down to like, you know, like, oh, artists only get paid X for those boxes. And I'm like, mm, you know, they get paid more than that. And then there there was a this one particular individual also felt like, um, I guess, Sign Pro does all the reps um, and just just this is where I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I know, you know, that that there's like a, a monopoly, I guess, on who's benefiting. Uh, I think if uh, we've like, actually dealt with I, I know who you're talking about and we've actually dealt with that years ago and dispelling that misinformation. So they must not have believed us when we actually, well, like, it, it might be a different person, but it's just like, so I think these are just like rumors that persist. And mm -hmm. so maybe if it was even like on, I'm looking at the mm -hmm. webpage right now about this traffic signal boxes, you know, if it was like, these are all the companies that do art boxes, this is what people get paid. I don't know. A good yeah. Q&A, you know, that's yeah. a good idea yeah. to have a year round Q&A, even though we probably have one year left or two years left. So um, I think I, a Q &A I, though you know, for all of the projects. I'll put that together, a just draft, um, or if anybody has heard questions, and then we could put, Dennis and I can put together responses to that. Yeah, that would um, be a good idea. Great. I think, and, that, and to have that on the website, I think would be really great year round. I agree. I That's think part of like, who we are. And, and I don't think, uh, I don't know, like I'm, I do pottery um, and I regularly look at art calls and there's so many of them that I would have to pay to submit, you know, if I want to submit my piece into a cup show, for example. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I don't think it's an unreasonable expectation. Like, I don't think I should get, I mean, it, it would not be a norm to be paid to submit like me to yeah. get paid. And so, I mean, I, I don't know how many like things I've applied to that I never get into, but I sent them my $10, you know? And like understanding that's also what funds these galleries or like, you know, the clay studio or whatever. Um, and yeah, I think I part of it, it too is, I mean, all everybody is saying some really great things. And I think what we also need to keep in mind is every one of our art calls is different. There are times when we have enough money to pay artists and um, we'll go through multiple stages of collection, two or whatever, and reduce it to the finalists. And then the finalists are asked, you know, are asked to make models and they get paid a certain amount of money. Um, and, and really what happens is when we put out the art calls, we've always discussed what's the best way to do this. Mm -hmm. um, so that fluidity is kind of nice also. I don't, um, I mean, we've never asked artists to pay us, which I, you know, there was a long, long, I'm, it's kind of funny that you say they're still doing that because there's a huge movement to not have artists pay to submit. So it's interesting, yeah. but again, in the times things change and you know, everything ebbs and flows and then it goes back around in a circle again. But um, I think for us, and I love the conversation, I think for us, every time we put out a call to really seriously consider what we're asking the artists to do for that call. And if we can pay them something great, if we can't, how do we make it as easy as possible for them? There's so, another aspect to this so, that we haven't talked about yet. And that is that, um, we imagine the signal boxes and, and a lot of these smaller art projects to be part of the professionalizing of artists um, where mm -hmm. they are supposed to be, you know, we're giving these to emerging artists. We're creating opportunities for emerging artists. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many times I've 
worked with young artists here where they come in, their hair's on fire and they just got this call for art. And it's this huge project. It's like a hundred thousand dollar project and they have no idea where to start. And they, that one does require models and it requires a team and it requires project management and it, mm -hmm. and they're like, how do I, so, so one of the selling points of the rigor of our program is that we are helping professionalize them. Mm -hmm. But that means the onus is on us to do the work of educating, which means yeah. an FAQ on our website mm -hmm. and really clear information because we can't claim it's good for you because rigor is good for you if we're being well, what slack or rigor. I, well, one of the things I was hoping to do was with our um, university program. So we do that for the university students to get exposed to the art calls and how to fill them out. And one of the things I wanted to do was go into the classroom and actually talk to them about an art call and how does it work and why. So that, I mean, with COVID, unfortunately, that's not gonna happen this year. This year. Um, but that's a goal, that was a goal of mine for this year was to make that something that we did each semester would be talking to the university students about that. So that's a good opportunity for us to dispel misinformation, do a Q&A um, in that light. So I wonder if there's an opportunity for us to link up with the university and do something via Zoom, like maybe go into one of their classrooms. Yeah, Anybody I mean, any thoughts on that? Um, like maybe, a, maybe just like a jumping off point to meet the younger, newer artists and do and talk about like what you're saying is, a way to help professionalize you and like we're here to help you and you know to get ready for the bigger art calls that are out there and then work with the zach too i don't know yeah I'm just right now. i go into julia galloway and trey's class almost every semester and they came over here um even even this semester they came over because um like talking to a gallery owner is part of their curriculum um so there's a class over there called Beyond Art School um, that is taught, I think, once a year. Um, so that would be a good, I mean, that class. But I think, um, you know, Kevin Ball's got to have something similar to that. But they're always looking for that kind of um, engagement for their students. But that audience is a fleeting audience. Like of yeah. the people going through art school, only maybe 20% stay in Missoula. So there's this bigger issue of the young um, near poverty line artists <laughs> that are living in Missoula trying to get by. And that is, and their resources are Zach and Von Kalman um, and to us to some extent, but. Um, well, what if we did, um what if we, I mean, Lisa, this is just a thought. What if we invited the Zach, you, and um, us, and we did a Q&A, the three groups, the Radius Gallery, the Zach, and the Public Art Committee? Yeah, and I keep talking about this, um, the series that we want to do called Do the Work. And it's just about the, the actual hand-over-hand -hand work of a professional career in the mm -hmm. arts and that would, this would fit in that series. Um, and we were scheduled to launch it this year, but, um, but it's, it's just how you have to do the work. You have to be rigorous. I mean, and that's, that's where this is falling. It, I mean, there is a, a certain laziness that um, when you're overwhelmed and you're near poverty, you get this kind of like, I can't do it all. And everyone's asking too much from me. And it sounds like that's the kind of squawking we're hearing. Um, so can if we just did it. Can you send me Julia and Trey's email so I can reach out and ask if I sure. could do a class with them or just pop my head in at any time to talk about art calls. Mm -hmm. um, and if anybody wants to join me, please let me know. And we can do a Zoom call. The college kid talk about art so much fun oh yeah um, you're on mute <laughs> um you know I, I think those are all great ideas too and you know this is the first year pro for the signal boxes that we have not done an instructional day or not day but um instructional meeting informational meeting on the boxes and we generally have eight to ten artists who come and they realize 
I mean, I get people don't like model things, but they realize that they don't have to make high food. We did have had people do flats as long as we can see the art. And I'm just using that as an example. Um, but, you know, I guess what I'm thinking too is we should do informational meetings about participating in public art maybe once a year, like just a general one, more than just the signal boxes. I mean, that, again, this was our whatever, however many year, 10th or 12th, and we've had one every year, but, you know, and to work with Zach um, and Lise in, the, in a gallery to say, okay, here, you know, here's, these are options out there for you. And we have in the past done things, but not regularly. And maybe that's where we're missing the boat. Um, you know, I, and Dennis, you can maybe um, agree or um, talk about this, but when Dana was on the committee, I mean, we're talking, we have a nationally, internationally famous artist who does public art, um, started at the low levels and is now at the high levels. And she's always willing to share that. So if we did something, I mean, I mean, I would bet that she would help us with that and talk about that reality too and how it may seem rigorous now, Lisa, as you keep saying, which is really what it is. But if you want to do this, um, this is what it takes. And, you know, some artists, public art just isn't for them. Stan Hughes mm -hmm. hates public art. And he will tell you because he is just not one of those people who wants to deal with contracts, wants, doesn't want to deal with those kind of deadlines, just doesn't want to deal with the rigmarole. Um, and when he did the piece on the Studebaker building, the Studebaker, it just, there he verified that, you know, he loved doing the piece, but he said, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> so maybe we should, um, you know, I love what you're talking about, Lisa, and do something once a year, more than the things I do with the signal boxes, but just, art in general, public art in general, and all of our submissions. So. That's a I, good idea. I Heidi? love that idea too. Um, I'm wondering if it would be worth, I think the Zach uh, in Von Kamp, like I think that doesn't maybe capture everyone in Missoula, mm -hmm. because I think there are a lot of artists also that are like older and maybe this is not what they study in college um, and are missing that piece of like how to actually connect um so I, if you guys develop some sort of a curriculum i think it'd be really cool to put it out to maybe like the lifelong learning center too because i think they hit a completely different demographic of our community but they could use this information just as much so yeah it sounds and, really and frankly bringing in laura and the staff i mean good heavens we've got a museum member on our board <laughs> so to integrate all of that and you know and maybe it's you know we do a series you know of, of different locations once a week or once a month and yeah. this week we'll be here this week we'll be here yeah there's enough material that we don't i mean i was offering up that series that we were already thinking about, but there's enough here to create four to six weeks of um, material, mm -hmm. um, especially if they're an orientation and then a different guest speaker or, um, so like say Courtney starts the meeting by saying an overview of the public art projects. And then there's an interview between Dana Bassard and um, someone I wonder if this could also be something like with MCAT where we do, you know, interviews with them to reach that audience who watch public television. Um, yeah. And then we I think we have a really, it, that'd be great. I think we have a really good foundation now. And if you guys are okay, I'm happy to take on the um, kind of outline of what we're going to do and then kind of try to form something for us to get this Q&A going and public outreach to hopefully change the narrative. And I might be reaching out to all of you guys for help. Courtney, I think you're a lot. I it is, well, that's my point, reaching lot. out to every single I one think, of you. Well, I know we all be I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this and I'm, gonna, I'm going to do this. And I think you only have so many hours in the day. <laughs> oh, I'm not doing that much. The mountain lion, that's, I were really just like assisting. We're not doing that much with that one um, because it's Shanti's project. We're just a contributor. Um, 
Lisa and Danny are really running the indigenous mural. I'm just assisting with that one too. This would be like, I think the only thing that I would be working on. Yeah, but our mural is going to pull you in a lot more starting tomorrow. <laughs> and I, and you know, um, I'm going to do the Q and A. Well, then and I, will my, I will be doing that, and I will see what <laughs> happens with the indigenous mural. Okay. But I will, assist, I will help anyone who um, starts this. And I think we really do need to like start a Q and A and figure that out. Well, we already have a Q and A that's in the public art guide. I think we should make that. Yeah. Obvious. No, I mean like a yeah. Zoom Q and A with right. the Zach okay. and all right. of these, where we can like do a kind of a meeting with people to bring mm -hmm. them in, let them ask us questions. Mm -hmm. We can answer them to hopefully change the narrative, make us actually personable. Because I think right now they think public art committee, and they think maybe it's a bunch of like scary people sitting behind desks who aren't actually part of the community and are just really like cranky all the time. So let's change that and not. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I think they might have in their head and humanize us and personalize us and then they're like oh they're not so bad yeah well, I'm just really saying bad. even preliminarily to get um uh, the existing Q&A that we have up and very much more visible than it is um I'll work on a Q&A and share and have Dennis and I rather hopefully can work on a Q&A for the signal boxes do you mean an FAQ like a uh -huh. Frequently asked questions? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. Kirsten, could you do some like graphic or something on it and then put it up on the Facebook page and Instagram page and be like, hey, did you know? And then link them back to the website and maybe we can put more information on the website to give them like FAQs on that. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like a good plan for start? Because then it's not too much work. I don't know. Um, how do you feel we about have that? Some of those answers. And like I said, we can work on the signal boxes and then you all can add questions to that if we don't hit them. And Dennis, maybe do you think we could do that by next month or next meeting? You're on yeah, mute. I don't see why not. Okay. And then we can get that everyone and you can add things that you've heard um, because it is, I mean, unfortunately, you know, when I've taught public art, things and classes, it's always been, you know, there's the art side and then there's the health, safety and welfare side and, you know, all of that. And it just, it is, it's frustrating for people. And maybe we could cast it in a, in a funner way. Like, oh yeah. What's awesome about this, what this program will do mm -hmm. for you. And then here's the nitty gritty fine print um, mm -hmm. because we're a government agency and we're getting government mm -hmm. money. We have to dot these eyes. I mean, just be upfront about it. I think people will plow through. Exactly. It. Yeah, it's, I think that the misconception about government and public art joining together is really confusing. Mm -hmm. And just the weight of an application, like you said, and contract can be very overwhelming when a lot of it is just legalese to protect all entities involved that they don't actually have to be too concerned with as far as um, knowing all, like being able to, I don't know, really get their teeth into. Well, but they, you know, it is one of those things and there really isn't, um, I mean, other than guest speakers, when we all go out and if we've done it at the U or wherever, um, there aren't classes on public art. I mean, Michael did his on um, murals two years running when they did the Orange Street underpass, which was really great because, I mean, as a class, it taught artists that there was more to this than just art. And I don't know that, well, there isn't any mural class like that at the university any longer. And, you know, it was really beneficial then. And then he went back to Boston. Although Brian Sippy and Kevin Ball are talking about getting students involved in the murals out mm -hmm. there on the radius wall. So there is, um, they're talking about starting a mural mm -hmm. class again. Yeah, and that's always come up, I think, with um, us talking about murals is making each mural a learning opportunity yeah. to get new artists. Because I think- An apprenticeship. When we were, when we were gonna do the trap, not the trap, when the um, parking commission was gonna do another mural with flagship, 
we talked about making that a learning opportunity for artists too to come and just because um, we were going to have artists there helping. So just making it something for them to learn and to be engaged in. So I think, yeah, there's always an opportunity for teaching. Yeah, and we had talked about in, pre, in some earlier meetings about like when we have a big project, like Lily's project, like what would it be to pay another artist a couple hundred dollars to be her assistant, um, to, to have an apprentice. So um, we could have taken one of those people that maybe didn't win a signal box and like send that out to them. Would you like to apply for an apprenticeship? Um, yeah. with the mural maker. I mean, mm -hmm. that would be significantly less dollars and a lot of boom for our buck in that. I mean, if we, if we want this to be a mural rich city, we have to find ways to get this education to our, yeah. our emerging artists and our just living artists who are living in this town, our resident artists. Yeah. Um, That's one thing that I was talking about with the college students when they were doing the university project is just letting them know that like, you now are a public artist. So put that on a resume. You have a piece of public art on display mm -hmm. that could potentially also be sold. So then, you know, like use these things to help bolster your resume and really propel you forward in the art community and use all of it as a learning opportunity. You know, and that it was great, but that wasn't really what it ended up being. It ends up being yeah. a gallery project and it's not really a public art project that involves all of the aspects of the things an artist deals with in a public art kind of major project situation. Yeah. I, no, well, I, I, don't, I don't mean that to be negative. I just no. I'm saying they didn't have to, they, there's no. Yeah. They did work no contract. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a great project. Don't get me wrong. And I, I love that because it's an introduction, but I think we need to take it a step further. Yeah, we could. I mean, we can, I mean, we, we're not doing anything this year for obvious reasons. So there's an opportunity to revamp the process and change it. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not we going to revamp it. I think it's great at what it does because I think, and Lise, what you said too, um, you know, they're better and better. The university is getting at in helping artists after they graduate. And if you're going to be an exhibition artist and whatever you're going to be doing and how do you do that? And um, I mean, I'm just like you said, you have artists that come in and it's like, where do I go and what do I do? Um, and well, first you need to frame that piece or get it presentable. <laughs> you know, so there's just so much out there. So I think what the project we've done with the university is exciting. I yeah. mean, it's just a second stage that we can go through. I don't yeah, and it's been an evolving thing. I mean, mm -hmm. going into the classrooms was the next stage of education for the artists that obviously didn't happen this year, but there's ways, yeah, there, we can absolutely look at ways to make it more worthwhile and more educational. And it's not just for the artists that stay in Missoula, it's just for artists in general. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're young emerging artists. Okay. All right, cool. so um, how does everybody feel about that conversation? Does anybody want to add more to it? Is there anything that we missed in discussion of it? I feel like we have a solid plan of formulating an FAQ between Kathy and Dennis um, about traffic signal boxes in which, um, and Kirsten, please be forgiving, Paisley. Um, and if everybody didn't read the email, Kirsten is actually going to be changing her name to Paisley. So, um, Bear with us, growing pains. No, and that's, yeah, and that's totally fine. My, um, I got married a couple of weeks ago. Um, and so just kind of shifting things, uh, my full legal name will be Kirsten Paisley Thornton. So I'll never be upset if you still call me Kirsten, as long <laughs> as you pronounce it right. Otherwise, I'm Paisley. <laughs> um, congratulations on your wedding. Thank you. <laughs> um, but then uh, Paisley is going to put it on the Facebook page, Instagram, but then linking people back to our website where um, if you can just write up just general like did you know about the public art committee and just put it on the website it doesn't need to be I think really end up at this point just general general did you know you can sign up to, you can submit your email to be part of our art calls here and then give them a link where they can go 
Or did you know that you know, City of Missoula has the Percent for Art program that helps fund some art. Otherwise, it's mostly through donation and grants. And, and again, all those Q&As in the back of the public art guide could be a good start. And you, yeah. you've got those in somewhere in Word format. So, so we'll start there. Um, uh, also, um, I mean, let's think a little bit about information architecture, like how people get this information, mm -hmm. what they see first. I mean, when you're talking about multiple pages of FAQs, that mm -hmm. doesn't work. People will read maybe six yeah. FAQs. Right. And that's well, um, that's what I'm thinking is just something small, short, just like bites. the basic general FAQs. And then um, but if, if they're the next in meeting to do a Zoom thing maybe for the next year with um, different organizations where we reach out. And you know, what what is still saying? doing our um, M, um, MCAT show. Let's get on our MCAT show a few times. We should do the MCAT show. That would be great. Um, I can, can reach I go out. back to what I was saying earlier? Yeah. We, um, about information architect. So the FAQ can only be maybe six but you can write multiple introductions to things and introductions are something that people read. So if you set up the information to be a kind of kind and lighthearted intro and then put the bureaucratic language or things like that mm -hmm. in tight bullets, um, you, can, you can get people through a lot more information um, mm -hmm. if you just put it in these bite sizes. And with a super front, like with headings, short introduction, and then the hard stuff. Heading, short introduction, and then the hard stuff. You can, like people will plow through things as long as they're being guided through the information in a way that is um, pleasant and then rigorous. <laughs> um, so I, I just wanted to say that it's, it's not just about getting information on there but structuring it in a way that makes it um, not easy to read, but um, a little less bureaucratic sounding. And our contract should be looked at too to see if we can lighten the legalese in it. I know I got the standard art contract for Radius and it was like three pages long and full of, rate, full of just legal language. And I was able to get that down to one clearly written page of the most important information. Um, so that kind of editing can be done as well. Did you get all that, Casey? Yeah, um, it's a lot. I feel like, um, I don't know if we need like a website committee, a, a website subcommittee. Um, so that, you know, I'm not just taking these, these bits of information that I'm getting from, from lots of other people and just trying, I don't know. Um, I think it's, I think it's, uh, going to take a lot more discussion than we have in the next 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. We, we can print out the web pages and just go through an editing process with them. Um, yeah. So why don't we plan that for next meeting then we can, um, you, Kathy and Dennis can get their FAQ together and ready to go. And then um, if you want to come up with just a few small ones, maybe like three, we don't need a lot because if they're doing an FAQ, just like the three things that you're like, uh, or like how to get, how to get into the art calls, that would be one. Um, how we get our funding and um, Maybe, but that's not submission. That's just PAC stuff. And again, we have well, that. Yeah, but I mean, like it's, yeah. it's like information though that we're going to be okay. able to get out instead of having all this like misinformation of like, oh, I don't even know how to get part of their art calls. Like, oh, I didn't go. Yeah, I'm kind of what I'm hearing is we maybe need to to start with a revamp of information on the website and make sure that's coming across very positive and very um and 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 easily readable and digestible and then mm -hmm. once once the website is has been updated then maybe do these little blasts on social media that are like did you know one single fact head to the there website let's, let's do that how does everybody feel about that thumbs up if we all agree i think that's a great idea 
Okay. Let's do that. Is that too much? Yeah, no, that sounds great. I think, yeah, okay. we'll just need to work with all the individual parties about their projects and their pages and just kind of make sure those are looking good over the next month. Um, yeah. And then once we feel good about how the website's looking, then we can just do these little things, these little pop pop-ups. Perfect. I think that's a good place for us to start. Do we have a good uh, website designer for the website? Absolutely not. No, the website has existed for a long time. I don't know who I, um, I don't know who started it years ago. Um, it's been the same since I got here. I've just been maintaining it and updating it. But um, I am not a web designer. It's it's in Squarespace, so it's really easy. Um, but there's also we're kind of limited design wise. We can't overhaul it entirely. Mm -hmm. um, but no, we do not have a web designer. Maybe that's something to think about for next year, budget wise. Does anyone have, <clears throat> excuse me, does anyone have anything else that they want to add to this conversation before we move on? I think it's been great. Thanks, everybody. I think it's, it's been, been a really, I feel like we've had a really productive conversation with it. Um, but we can move on now to announcement news or upcoming events. If anybody has anything that they would like to share. Do you guys, does anyone have photographs of the murals that are being put around town? We were going to put something in our newsletter about the different murals. So there's one at Pov. There's the one at the donut shop. Theirs are great. Those are super cool. And then there was another one, which I can't remember right now, but I need photos of the Paparella one. Does anyone? Kirsten has um, photos. I might those. have some because I took some, but Kirsten, you have some. I um, got working photos of the POV, but I don't have a picture of huh. the final product huh. of the POV mural. Huh. Okay. I wonder if I'll you can have Jeffy. I'll go take some. I've got, okay. I can use my, yeah, I'm okay. just happy to do it, so. Okay. Thanks. We just wanted to put a blast out about all the great mural work being done in Missoula. Um, and speaking of murals, I don't know if you've all seen the public free publication around town, Great Falls Business Improvement District. We helped them um, get the signal box project started there, but they have gone above and beyond and have done um, an amazing mural project. Um, and I was going to grab the publication, but I haven't, but it's free and like you can grab it around town. It's like um, independent size. I will tell you, they've been stupendous. And I did put in a call to the coordinator because it's a business improvement pro project and I worked with her on the signal boxes, but I was hoping to get some more information that could help us with murals. But I'm telling you, they are absolutely gorgeous. I've seen a few pictures. Pardon? I've seen a few pictures. I, I oh wonder my gosh, they are going. they are so stunning, and it, 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 there's they're beautiful. I mean, there's multiple murals mm -hmm. each year. Yeah, we can learn something from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joan um, is the she's the director of the BID, and you know they and BID is funding these to a large part with additional monies. So it's just so cool. Hmm. Awesome. So, um, anything else anyone wants to bring up before we adjourn? Hey, and Danny, can I ask you a question? And, and Lisa, you know this person, James Red Fox, because he came into your gallery and Brian's working with them with framing one of his beat pieces. And I'm trying to help him. I, I, I want him to do a show of his ledger art at our Berkshire Gallery downtown. Mm -hmm. But he's really wanting to meet other Native artists. And I was hoping that I could share this information with you. Um, I'm going to, I've um, called Monica. So, and I just thought, well, you're sitting there. Are, are you, if I send you his name, do you know who he is? And are you okay with that? Or would you prefer not to deal with it? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that, that would be great. Um, I've heard of um, him, um, but I don't know him personally. So, yeah, that would be great. 
Thank he's, you. he's Blackfeet. Um, he's living in our, our Lee. And then he also, and Lise, do you know Craig Red Elk? Have you seen his work? Because um, according to James, Craig does, is a, does beautiful paintings. Hmm. No. So I'll, t I'll talk to you about that too, but. Okay. Yeah. Send me oh. any names. And if you, uh, Danny, I didn't get to ask you, how is your list going? Are you collecting? Are you getting any more artists? Um, I in? have. Well, I kind of put a pause. Um, I mean, I was talking to um, some people down in Crow and Northern Cheyenne. I have some people um, kind of really interested in this project um, in Northern Cheyenne. Um, but I, yeah, I kind of, in the last couple of weeks, I kind of put a pause on that. Um, just, um, just COVID is just ripping through all of these communities and it, I, it's just not important right now. So um, uh, hopefully I could do more, but I mean, it's, yeah, it's like these uh, communities, are, these communities are just, they're in mourning right now. And um, yeah, just trying to do what I can um, with what I would, what I can do with what I have. I don't know. Um, okay. yeah, it's going though. <laughs> do you have the link for tomorrow's meeting or do you need me to send you that, Danny? Um, I think you sent it to me already. Um, well, I think you're on the list now. Look, Google for Nathan. And yeah. Um, yeah, I have it on my, ca my calendar. Yeah, okay. I have it. Can you All send right. that to me, Lisa, please? Yeah. Yeah, I do have a note to send it to you, Courtney. Thank you. Um, well, awesome. I am thinking that we're at a good place for stopping for the week or for the month. Um, <laughs> stop for the week, yeah. All right, well, we will see everybody probably on Zoom next month. Bye, everybody.